Hey guys, welcome to the Crafty Crow channel. Today's episode, as usual, we're going to do kind of what we feel like doing. So today I figured that we would look into my backpack uh, for camping, um, eventually hiking, um, and was kind of thinking about maybe doing a series on that. Uh, I'm going to show you my backpack today, all my content in it, and I do kits in the packs we might uh, end up breaking down a kit or breaking down all my kits and show you what's in them show you what I carry because um, I know in the future you're gonna see some plenty of videos going camping and things like that and you might be wondering what I'll carry and how I carry it so that's what we want to do today so stay tuned hope you enjoy it set back grab you a cold drink well, let's get to looking Okay guys, so here's my pack. This is a best I can figure late 90s model, medium eyeless pack. Um, I know military, I've always liked military surplus. Uh, it's built very well, it lasts a long time. Uh, I have tried and tried to think when I actually got this pack. I got the pack, no shoulder straps or anything on it. Um, and I really think that I got it back when I was in Boy Scouts. So we're talking the late nineties um, and never used it because I, I didn't know, you know, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have uh, a lot of those search engines and stuff. So I, I didn't know that there were straps you could get for it or anything like that. I, I always wondered how you actually hooked it onto a pack. So I never used it, but I kept it all these years because it was in good shape. Um, I had a different pack from Walmart. Um, when I was going on a couple of little ventures, uh, it's been six, seven years ago. It's even that long. It might not have been that long, but um, had this one just sitting back collecting dust. Told my son I had it. He didn't really like it that much. I got to thinking about it and I was like, you know, I like those packs. Let's get this thing and started researching. So I have built this pack. Um, I cleaned it, went through, sewn every stitch that uh, might have been coming out of it or anything you know went over it very well uh, before I started building it up uh, looked through YouTube for about every mod that you could get on the thing um, some of them really made sense to me uh, I think I've got it all put together uh, so show you what I got show you around my pack as you can see maybe you got the Crafty Crow logo on it. Um, it's not that cool. It don't stand out real good, but it actually blends in. So this is my pack. Dry weight, best I can tell, is right around 20, 25, 26 pounds, if I remember right. And a third of that weight is just the pack. Um, like I said, military, bomb proof stuff but you know it's heavy it's not ultra light or lightweight or anything like that but uh, a lot of my kits a lot of ideals in here and everything i went crazy crazy watching dave canterbury um learn a lot from that man um, have a lot of respect for him um, watch some of his other instructors at the pathfinder school um, there's coke racker bushcraft I know I watch a lot of uh, Corporal's Corner. I really like his. I um, like his sense of humor more than anything, but um, really watch a lot of Dave's. I've been watched a lot of Dave's. Um, I like how he combines modern techniques and modern ideals with historic stuff that's always worked uh, because I really like history. So that's probably why I've watched so many of his. So thinking about doing a short series because you know if you all are liking the channel you need some content to watch and i'm all about if you can binge watch me eventually that'd be great um so let's try to give you some some things to watch here instead of just one or two videos so today we'll go through my pack i'm just going to kind of fly through it and then we'll probably take time to go into each one of my individual packs um, it won't be very long videos be kind of shorties but We'll try to make a series out of this. So, don't know what we'll call it yet. But, um, you know, let's dig into my pack. So, like I said, medium Alice pack. 
uh, three large pockets on the front, then just one big main tub on the inside. Now there is a radio pocket in the back I'll try to show you. Um, what I've got first off, you can see laying on the ground behind it. This is a wool blanket. It's summertime. I wanted to try the wool blankets. This was my great grandfather's or my great uncle's. Um, I'm not sure which one I owned because they were in a closet in their old house. I've got uh, two of these and then two of the regular uh, U.S. Army blankets that you always see, but I think these might actually be 100% wool. Um, so I tried it out and tried it out in the summer because, you know, you don't leave much weight. Um, that straps to the bottom. I bought these extra straps just to strap it to the bottom. Um, the other thing that I have rolled up in it is a uh, sleep pad. It's not very thick, but it is reflective on one side, heat reflective. Um, I got this. It would help on the ground, not a lot, because it's not very thick. Um, but I'm a hammock camper, and the hammock that I have is a double layer. So this will slide in between the layers, and that reflective will actually reflect that heat back up on me. Um, I've used it once since I've had it, uh, and since I've had my new hammock, and work really good. I'm really happy with this decision. I think Rothko makes this. They make a lot of military uh, items. I know they make uh, frames for these packs and stuff. Uh, so you can look them up. I don't remember the price. It wasn't much, which, you know, like I said, you can see it's not much. I think it's a Mylar coating, but um, good pad. All right, next up on the outside, it's got a pair of uh, gloves, leather gloves. These are Carhartts. Um, I actually took mink oil to these, and I don't know if I regret that or not yet because I'm not using them a whole lot, uh, but that did waterproof them and gave them this dark look. Um, Jason from Man's Adventures really liked these, he said. I'm wondering where I got them, and I pretty much just made them. You know, I'll do a lot of things. That's the whole crafty part of the Crafty Crow Channel. Um, trying to make things tailored to me. And instead of buying high dollar stuff, you know, you can do common man things that's cheaper and, and get away with it. So, gloves always on the outside of the pack for quick access. I have a hatchet. Um, nothing fancy. This is actually a little craftsman hatchet that I've. Uh, maybe some hangers for the side of the pack to put it on um got it sitting over here it's the sheath is pretty much locked onto the pack the hatch is nothing special got it at a uh, yard sale or actually a flea market um kind of sanded down the handle got the blade a little bit sharper because you know, it was kind of in rough shape but overall this is how how it came from the factory still got craftsman on the handle um it's been a good little hatchet you know, it's not the best. It's not horrible either. I think it's good U.S. steel, so we can work with that. Oh, bringing on around, as you can see, got a grab handle. This is paracord I put on there. Um, hanging off a tree and stuff, it's real helpful to have that on it. Front of the pack, now my straps. This was one of the mods. My strap is a mod in itself. This is the uh, Molly 2 suspension system. Um, you look up pending videos, we might go into some day of how I put this on. There's you know tons of videos out there. I think it's eBay purchase. Uh, a lot more padding than the original Allen straps, and I did have original Allen straps. Um, had a lot more padding, had some attachment points, and had uh, load lifters and stuff. It, it just... Uh, when I put these on, it, it made a world of difference with the weight and the way it carried and everything. I really liked it. Um, also, with the mod, I've got the Alice hip belt, or the uh, Molly hip belt. Uh, big padded hip belt, way better. And actually, the original hip belt that come on these, well, it was made for military guys. I'm a big boy. Guess what didn't fit, and I had to try to get an extension. But this hip belt actually wraps around you there's molly attachments here you could attach something down there if you wanted but um i think you could even take this off and use this they use it as a battle belt um so you could have attachments on there and just 
you know, drop the pack was great. It fit. I don't have to have an extension, which was nice. Hopefully getting into some of this, you know, I'm hoping to lose some weight with it. So, but that wasn't a problem starting out. On the front, I've got a pack. Wasn't real happy with it, but this is my compass. Um, with all my compass kit, I don't have any mats, <clears throat> but this is my notebook, my compass and everything. This will be one of the kits we'll break down. But it's right there in front. Whenever I need it, I can just pop it out, use it, put it back. There's no hunting for it. Uh, on this other side, I've just got a little, uh, small little compass. You know, I'm not going to trust this as much as I am my main compass, but it will give me general direction. And it's also got a thermometer on it, so I can see how hot it is. Like right now, it's, well, probably about 85 degrees out here. Swing it around to the other side. I have the, uh, like I said, you're going to have to forgive me. I went Pathfinder crazy. I went Dave Canterbury crazy for a while. Um, I have purchased a lot of stuff from Pathfinder School. Everything I've got from them has been awesome. Uh, they make a lot of stainless steel stuff, so it's not for ultralight backpacking or anything, but stuff's going to last me forever. For the rest of my life, if I take care of it. It's all heavy duty. It's all made well. A lot of it's uh, modeled either after historic things or uh, military style stuff. Um, but it's a whole kit. It's got uh, wide mouth um, opening up here to help fill it easier. It's also got the, uh, the cup and the stove in here and the lid for the cup. And that all come as one kit. Again, that's a kit we'll go through all on its own eventually. Uh, actually, I'm changing this out probably. I've not totally made up my mind for water uh, just to lighten the load a little bit. But I have used it, took it on a few campouts already. Love it. Okay. Kind of tucked in behind one of the pockets because the good thing about these medium packs, all three of these pockets. If people in this town spend as much on their vehicles as they did on their other habits, everybody would have a muffler going up this hill. Um, I have back here tucked in the back a Bonco Laplander saw. Uh, these are great little saws. Uh, a lot of people pack a bow saw. And you know, for bigger stuff, it would take a while to get through there. Big debate right now in the bushcraft community, this over a silky. Uh, I bought this. Actually, this come with a uh, Mora knife. Uh, it was made for Bonco, it looks like, but it's, it's a Mora. Um, gave that to my son. He didn't have a knife for his side, so I gave that to him. That's why I bought it. It was just a few dollars more than just buying the saw, so why not? Um, keep it tucked back here, and it's strapped in so it won't hit the ground. Now, open up one pocket. This is kind of my possible's pouch. Um, got a life straw. Uh, those have been great, especially if you're doing light hiking or something. This would be the thing to go. This is actually the thing that I'll take if I just have a haversack or something with me. Oh, spare notebook. Um, some of this stuff you'll see in here. I've not cleaned this out because we've not been camping uh, much over the summer since it's been so hot. I've got other gear to put in here and switch out with this. So, you know, there'll be a little bit of stuff. Um, sewing kit. This is a bag that I made. Um, all my little bags, I waxed them. Myself, this is uh, duck canvas. Just popped on the sewing machine. The sewing machine didn't like going through that thick of canvas because it's not really made for that with the needle sizes, but we powered through it, made a sewing kit. Um, this is one of the things out of the nomadic box. Just a little, uh, you inflate it, it's a little light, solar powered so it would recharge. This was good to put hanging in my hammock set up um just kind of give you some of that ambient light and it's a good little backup light you know once you inflate it and stuff and it's charged it, it's a pretty good little light it's got leds in here it was good little light i like that and that's one of the things that was great about the nomadic box 
Oh, we got my fishing kit. It's a fishing kit. And it's for that just in case. Um, my headlamp and spare batteries. Not really got a case or anything for that. Got a uh, sharpening rod to be able to sharpen my knives and stuff in the field. And this little container has, well, it's got some cotton balls, but down in here, my own special recipe. And the name of what it's called has totally left my mind. Fixing wax. I made my own fixing wax. All right, so I've got that in there. All right, that empties that pouch out. Next in here, we've got uh, cat tourniquet. Now, this is my first aid kit, and it's in the main back. It's easy to find, um, and it's the least obstructed. And everybody I go with knows this is where it's at. So, cat tourniquet right there, all to itself that you can find, nice bright color. And um, here's my first aid kit. Like I said, bag I made you see you put the logo on it first time I've ever tried to wax canvas and stuff so it was interesting to learn that and that's all that's in that pocket and then finally over here we have cordage um, got some uh, gorilla tape got paracord got a roll of bank line uh, about empty I've ordered some more uh, but that whole pocket is just dedicated to cordage and you can never have enough cordage out in the field now i think that's a 360 around on the outside so let's pop in the inside put uh, this is another mod now these old things just had i mean they had good straps and i've retained that in all the clips um, just in case, and this is the actual webbing that was on it, but I've put, put these straps on and these uh, buckles because it makes it easier to get into. Um, the lids of these probably used to be waterproof years ago. This one's not too bad. It usually wears off. Uh, in here I have a poncho. Just a military style poncho with grommets and snaps. Um, you get, use it for an emergency shelter if you need to. Got a signaling, uh, signaling flag. Also, uh, you know, just a band. It's just a big bandana. Uh, use it to wipe sweat, clean things. It's a bandage, um, and it's also good for putting up signaling in case you get lost for people to find you. Oh, medicinal plants of the Eastern Woodlands. Another Pathfinder purchase. Um, I've been wanting to start learning some of those plants, trees, things like that. So uh, I'm a little more self-sufficient when I'm out in the woods. All right, now in the big pack. We got up here in the top, like I said, this is a radio pouch. It's a separate pouch. It's the only pouch inside this big bucket. Um, I have a hygiene kit and my fire kit. Everything I need for hygiene, fire, you know, that's how I, I like these kits. I like doing kits. That way everything's all contained. You can pull them out like that. You know, they're marked. You can see what it is. It's easy to get to. Oh, besides the bag for my uh, poncho, that's all that's in the radio pouch. Now, we'll pull this one out first. This is my hammock. Suspension straps and stuff are inside. There's also a uh, toboggan to wear, you know, at night. It's good to have some kind of head cover to keep you from getting cold, especially in the winter. This is a war bonnet hammock. I was so, so excited to get this and saved up for this one. Um, only got to use it once so far, but man, it, oh. You don't even know. Uh, you will get to see this uh, on the next camping uh, video that we do and the adventure we go on because, 
man, this is like a Cadillac. I love this thing. Love this thing. Um, you know, I reviewed and reviewed, looked around. It's a great company. Um, we might go into this more. You know, like I said, this is just looking what's in the pack. But I love this thing. This is uh, a Chill Gorilla Hex Rainfly. Um, it's kind of made for tarps. You know, it, it's not a totally square tarp. Um, fairly light. I don't remember the weight. But bought this. have used this one a bunch. Love this thing. I mean, this thing is great, too. Uh, Chill Gorilla makes some good stuff. Um, I'm real happy with this tarp. Not had any problems out of it. It's pretty lightweight for a tarp. Uh, I think it's even on the ridge line, it's 12 foot. It's a pretty big tarp too, but um, could also use it as a shelter, use it as a tent if I needed to and sleep on the ground or something. So try to have redundancy in my pack, which, you know, that's what Dave tries to teach is redundancy and everything. And let's see. This is not waxed, a bag I made. Um, kind of copied off the Pathfinder. Um, the Woodsman's Pantry is what they call this. So they've got uh, tins, uh, big tins, and you know you put most of your food stuff in there so your dry goods go in here. Uh, this one, I still got stuff in this one. I didn't use it last time. Um, this is like rice, uh, I think chicken rice is what this is. And a whole pack of like uh, the north sides or something the whole pack will fit into this. You could actually get two meals out of this one thing. Um, there was something else in here. Let's see what this is. Ah, there's some of the scratch lab stuff I got from my nomadic box. Um, energy chews. Uh, I had a couple of packs of these last time. Uh, me and Jason went camping. I tried these out. They were really good. He liked them too. Um, they gave you a little energy. They've got the uh, 50 milligrams of caffeine is one pack, so it's good out on the trail or something, you know, give you a little boost of energy, but that day we needed it and it came in handy, so I really liked this. Then I've just got my little spice, spices and my salt and pepper and all that stuff that goes in this pack. Okay, we're almost done, guys. One of my favorites, we'll save it for last. What else we got down in here? Um, only thing left was spare clothes. So, last but not least, it looks like. Again, a Pathfinder, but this is the bush pot. You see, I made another canvas bag to keep it in. These pots and stuff where they sit over the fire, they get dirty, so it's good to put them in a bag just to uh, you know, keep from getting everything else in the pack dirty. But this is the small bush pot. I did make this bag just a tad bit too small. But I do want to get it out so you can see it. All right, as you can see, you know, this has been used some. I've used this a few times. Uh, there was a Pathfinder logo somewhere on it. I don't really remember now. I could scrape that off, but you know, I like that patina. Um, in that, we'll go in this real quick because I did see something. Um, the baby bottle, just for measuring. I'll probably find something else for that. A uh, Just one of the copper scrubby pads uh, so it won't rust. I can scrape out the inside. I've got, uh, well, this is a little. Uh, Oh, I forgot the name of it. And here I went and scraped the name off of it. It's a number seven. If I can remember the name, I'll let you know. But this come in my nomadic box. Great little, I'll just, the locking mechanism is so cool on this little knife. But uh, I've got it in my cook kit just as a spare knife and it's very lightweight and it's very sharp. So for cutting up anything, you know, uh, meat or processing anything, it's got this separate just for cooking. And it's so light, it don't even, you know, take up any space. Got a uh, 
a small wash rag. Uh, I have bought something to upgrade this, but I just got some material, sewed it up myself, put it in here, and that's what I washed this thing out with. Honey and olive oil. Because, you know, olive oil for any kind of oil and honey, because why not? It's honey, it's sweet, and it will last forever. Both these little bottles come in the nomadic box. Um, they're two and a half fluid ounces, each one. Uh, they're sealed up, so nothing's going to leak out. Um, they even have a little thing somewhere on it. Now, you can pop it up to hang or you know, screw the lid off or it's got a little pop top. Cool little things, and I can tell what's in it without having to label it. And finally in the bottom, coffee, because you got to have coffee. And I think uh, it's got some energy stuff, uh, some tea, some coffee, uh, the emergency. You know, it's always good to give you a boost or help boost your immune system while you're out. And then here's some of that scratch lamb hydration mix I was talking about from the Nomadic box. I've still got one of these left. Um, I've drunk two or three of them now. They're all pretty good. But keep all my coffee, my drink mixes, and stuff in here. And all that fits down in the pot. And we won't go too deep into the pot, but man, it's a great little pot. That's one of my favorite things. So, ladies and gents, I believe that is everything inside my pack. Um, got my shelter system, got my cooking. Got my lights. Uh, you know, you can check out Dave's videos, the five and ten C's, and you'll see what I'm talking about with it. But that's everything I've been using, and I'm still, you know, it's an ongoing process. I'm still uh, working on downsizing, upgrading, uh, a little bit of everything with it. But I want y'all to take a look. Figured you might be interested to see what I take. Um, you know, any camping video you'll see this, and I know there might be questions as to what do you use for this, what do you use for that, what's in your bag, so we'll cut it off the chase and do it now. So there's the pack. Hopefully we'll start a series. We'll go through each one of my kits and see what's in it. Um, maybe be a little interested in that. So I appreciate you all stopping by and taking the time to sit and watch this video. I really do. And uh, hope y'all come back and join us for another episode of the Crafty Crow Show. And until the next time, you know, if you like the content, like, subscribe if you can. And uh, have any comments, anything, let me know. Comment down in the boxes below and let's get a conversation going about it. Uh, it's a great little hobby to get into. Um, something that's always interesting to me. So. We can sit and chat about it as long as you want to. But thanks for showing up. Remember, love one another. And we'll see you all in the next episode.